Hey guys, uh, tonight's video is going to be about VPN, or Virtual Private Network. Um, the reason I'm making the video is because I actually had to mess with this today a little bit, and I decided to make a video about how we create a VPN. First, let's discuss what a VPN is. A VPN is a virtual private network, uh, which extends a local network over the internet um, to a machine in a remote location. Or what is a VPN used for? When you invite, when you want to invite remote machines or remote locations to join in one virtual private network, or you want to share the same network for any reason, that's what a VPN is used for. And setting it up, making it, is very easy. And I'm going to show you right now how to do it. I actually have logged me in over here, which is connecting me right now to a server on a different location. This server is actually in my office, and I'm at home. The computer you see I'm recording on is in my house. It will serve as the client, and the server is going to be our VPN host server. So let's get to it. Let's create a uh, VPN server connection. So how do I go about it? Well, in any Windows machine. This will work on a server. It will work on Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. This happens to be Windows Server. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click my little network connections icon, and I'm going to open my network and sharing center. A very familiar screen a lot of people are used to. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to change adapter settings and it's going to take us to our network connections it's going to show you that currently you have well i have two network ports one of them is connected to the internet the other one is disconnected on this screen while just clicking in the center i'm going to click on the alt key on my keyboard and what that's going to do is going to open up the toolbar and on the toolbar i'm going to click on file and i'm going to click on new incoming connection this will set up the server to receive a new incoming connection from a client, such as uh, my machine here. New incoming connection. I'm going to wait for the wizard to come up. And this is the beauty of this, because everything has a wizard. There's no coding of any kind. Now you'll see here that I have a user. Uh, this user is me, Elon. Um, you can actually add multiple users. Let's say you want a virtual private network among, I don't know, 10, 20 people. So right now, I've set up uh, this account and if you click on account properties here you could see that I've created a unique password for myself um, and everything is is pretty much pre-configured um, you'll right off the bat see your current computer's usernames and then you can create your own users as you go along and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on next and the next window will ask me how will people connect um, by default it says through the internet because that's what we're going to use our VPN for. We'll click Next. Uh, the next window is just selecting the protocols, IPv4. We don't really use IPv6, not yet at least. Um, but I'm going to click on Allow Access now. And what that's going to do is it's going to create my VPN adapter to a, this computer named Connector on an external network, which is far away from here. And I'm going to click on Close. Oh, OK. Now you'll see that I have a new um, network adapter waiting for incoming connections. This is my VPN adapter. I'm going to right click on this adapter and I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to networking tab and I'm going to double click on the IPv4 uh, TCP IP uh, protocol pipe and what I'm going to do is, and I've already done this before, but what you'll do is you'll specify in a range of IP addresses which you want your clients to receive. So in this case I set it from 240 to 245, which means that I'm willing to release six IP addresses for six people to connect to this VPN. And their IP addresses, as they connect, will be 240, 241, 242, 243, 244, finally 245. The reason I do this is because I know that this range is available on my network. I don't have anyone using this particular range, so I reserved it specifically for this VPN. Um, as opposed to giving it by DHCP, which may give conflicting errors. I've done that. So I've created this range of IP addresses, and I'm going to click on OK. And I'll click on OK again. Now lastly, what you need to do, and I can't really uh, do it from here, because I don't know my router's password, but I have Word 2016 open here. And there are two ports which you will need to forward. Now I've copied this here, and we'll be, we'll be using the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, tunneling, PPTP, and what, we, what you'll have to do on this machine, the server machine, is you'll have to do port forwarding. You'll have to forward the ports. Now, Some of you may ask, well, how the hell do I do that? He's not showing me how to do it. Well, it's very easy. Um, 
this machine is connected to a router, right? Um, the router that it's connected to is actually, and let me see if I can pull it up. I'm going to click on Run, CMD, IP config. That IP configuration command is going to show us our local IP address and our gateway. The default gateway usually leads you to the router. Um, in most cases, it's what you'll be typing in your browser, and it'll ask you for a username and password, and that's your router or switches configuration. Um, not your switch, your router, actually. And when you enter your router, right, you put in your username and password, there's a feature called port forwarding. Link, it's different than every router, but essentially it does the same thing. Linksys, um, you know, Linksys has it, Cisco, oh, Cisco is Linksys, but they have the port forwarding. But every router, Netgear, um, whatever you're using um, would have a port forwarding feature and what you'll want to do is you'll want to forward port uh, 1723 and port 27 to the IP address of this particular server so this server's IP address was what 1.64 or something like that well that's where you'll be forwarding those two ports to okay it's a very very easy thing you'll need port forwarding otherwise the connection will be terminated um, our VPN is not going to allow any access to any clients. So what I'm going to do now, suppose that I've created the port forwarding, which literally takes two seconds. Now, and your network administrator, unless you're the administrator, should know how to do this and can do it in a heartbeat. Um, now that this is created, now we're ready to connect with our client. So my client happens to be a Windows 10 client. Um, this is Windows 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to network connections on my end, right, on my machine. And instead of going to adapter settings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on set up a brand new connection. And I'm going to choose connect to a workplace or a VPN connection, which is a workplace. Uh, and I'm going to click on next. And it's going to ask me, well, how do you want to connect? I love these wizards. They make things so easy. I want to connect using my internet connection to this virtual private network. Uh, then it asks me, well, what is the IP address of the virtual network, um, the VPN server? The IP address of this machine. So I have created a uh, IP address for the purpose of this test, and I'm going to put the IP address in here. This will be my IP address for the server. I'm going to click on Create. What Windows is going to do is just create that connection. So now on my machine, when I go to Adapter Settings, you'll see I have three adapters. I have my Ethernet adapter, which is connected to the Internet. I have a Virtual Box adapter, which I use for my uh, Linux tests. And now I have this the VPN connection which I just now created this VPN connection is configured to connect to this VPN server on this machine so I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna choose connect Windows 10 has its own little um, network and internet VPN interface and it brings it up I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna choose connect what's going to happen is it's going to ask me for the username and password which I have originally set up by going to the properties of this uh, VPN server and if you recall, I had created um, this username, Elon, with a password. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to type that right here, I-L-A-N, with my password. And um, put this up here so you could see what happens. Oh, oops, let me minimize this out. I'll put it over here. And I'm going to click on OK you'll see Windows 10 is now verifying my sign-in information. Uh, it's verifying and it's completing the connection and take a look. One client has now connected to the VPN. And you can see here that the server acknowledges that Elon has made a connection um, to the VPN server. So now you can see that I'm clearly connected from a remote location. I've now established a VPN connection and I am finally connected. I am on the virtual network. Now log me in is going to refresh itself. Now there are two computers with my computer name. There's a computer in my office with my computer name and there is this computer in my home with the same exact name connecting to this network and that causes a conflict. Um, that's a pretty nasty conflict too. So you want to make sure that each um, computer has a unique name. Each user has a unique user and has a unique account. But the purpose of the video is to demonstrate to you how to create a VPN connection and we have created one from scratch on the server we have one client connected and if I click on this client and I click on status you will see that the IP address that was assigned is um, 
that 241. This was the IP address and the range that we specified that we want to give to people who connected this VPN. And now I'm sharing a network with this computer. So suppose I have 10 people connecting to this VPN. We're all on a big virtual private network. Now, this is the old school way of sharing files, uh, having a virtual network. Actually, a lot of companies use this now and a lot of people use it. But, you know, with the rise of, um, you know, SkyDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive, um, you know, it's, it's really not necessary to really have VPNs. But for more technical reasons, for sharing an address and being on the same network, it's kind of nice to have it. And it's good to have knowledge of it, of how to create it. So you saw how I made it, right? I went to the adapter section, I hit the Alt key on the keyboard, I clicked on File, and I created a new incoming connection. And that new incoming connection was this particular VPN server. And in the properties, you would see how I specified the uh, users. Um, I have one user, which is me, who connected this computer. Um, and also I showed you how you can go to networking, right click on the IPv4, well not right click, but just go to properties. And you could specify the ranges of IPs which you want to free up for this particular VPN server. So there are a total of six slots available for six people um, between 240 and 245. And you could see that by me connecting, and let me show you another cool thing. Uh, let me go here and let me open command prompt. And let me type IP config on my machine. And if you take a look, you'll see uh, that I now have a VPN IP address, a 192.168.1.241. And I also have my local IP address. I have my, my IP address that I have here on my home network, which is 192.168.1.104. Um, pretty cool, right? So I have, I have uh, two IP addresses now. I'm sharing in within the network of my server computer. So this is what I wanted to make the video about. I just wanted to give a quick, um, I guess, tutorial on how to create a VPN connection um, and how to set up a, uh, a, a virtual network, I suppose, um, on a server. For this purpose, I've used this Windows Server 2012. Um, now that I'm done with the video, I can actually kill this connection. So I could just right click it, choose to disconnect from the virtual private network. I can remove the connection from my machine. I'm just going to clean it out real quick. You see I removed the adapter and log me and we'll refresh. So this is um, my video about VPNs and I want to thank you guys for uh, for watching. Um, I'll be trying to put on a lot more content now. Um, as I move along and do things I like to create a lot of videos so if you have any questions feel free to email me. My email address is uh, elon at uh, dangerstudio.com and you can comment in the video. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. And um, well, it's 9.41 p.m., so I guess have a good night. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel uh, and view my other videos. I really appreciate all my viewers, all the comments, and all the great emails I've received. I'm going on almost 5 million views throughout all my videos, so thank you very much to everyone. Um, and we'll see you again soon.